It's about giving value to the local area as much as you possibly can do so that you are seen as the local authority on it. Hello, welcome to episode 212 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by UK-based Chris Webb, founder and owner of the Estate Agent Consultancy. With nearly two decades of hands-on experience in the real estate industry, Chris specializes in helping agents increase revenue, secure more listings, and convert leads more effectively. Throughout our conversation, Chris shares his advice and actionable tips around a wide range of topics, including how to compete against top producing agents, how to better market yourself as a new agent, and how to secure higher fees for your services. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoy this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course, YouTube. All right, let's get on with our conversation with Chris Webb. Be sure to check out the episode description for links to get a free copy of his book, Your First 1,000 Pound Estate Agency. All right. Well, if you could just uh, starting out, could you uh, give us a little background on yourself, who you are? And, uh, you know, we are based in the United States, but you are uh, across the pond, as they say. I very much am. Yes, I'm in a very cold British summer at the moment. So, uh, yeah, living the British dream. Uh, So I'm Chris. I'm the owner of the Estate Agent Consultancy. Um, I've been in the property world in the UK since I was 18 and I've just turned 38. So in my second decade or coming into my third decade now, um, fortunately or unfortunately. Um, And so for the last couple of years or so, I've run the Estate Agent Consultancy and effectively I'm a coach for estate agency businesses throughout the UK. Right. So uh, before you launched the, the consultancy, tell me about, you know, your experience in the, uh, the real estate uh, sector and, and what you were doing there. Yeah, so I started off as a junior negotiator in the estate agency, which um, to sort of give your audience an idea, that's kind of like pond scum entry level estate agency. That's like very much first day. You are the T-boy. You are the everything else off the back of it sort of thing. Um, and then very quickly worked my way up from junior negotiator to negotiator to senior negotiator um, to branch manager, regional managers, uh, national director, all this sort of stuff. So um, I've kind of been there, done that, seen the got the t-shirt on the corporate ladder side of things and did that to a certain level to the point where I was performance director with the property franchise group, which is the biggest franchising group within the UK um, and sort of had done it by then. I kind of feel like I'd kind of got to a level where I was really happy with it um, and then decided to do my own thing after that as of the last couple of years or so. Right. So, uh, you know, launching the uh, consultancy, what were some of the things that you were seeing in, um, you know, some of the estate agents in your area that you were wanting to help out? So I think that there's a real divide between the estate agents that make it in the UK and the ones that don't make it in the UK. And if you talk to them and you actually have a conversation with the, with the agents that are really, really good, if you had them both out to come and value your home and take it on the market and sell it, for example, actually the difference between the two of them wouldn't actually be that extreme. They'd both do a really good job. You'd like them both. And it might be a bit of a toying cost about who you actually went with onto the market with. The bit that differentiates differentiate the agents from that are really good from the ones that aren't so great is having an estate agency business behind them that can support them. So actual on the day, so most people go, actually, I want to launch my own estate agency business because I'm good at listing properties, selling properties, offer negotiation, all that sort of stuff. But I think, especially when you launch a business, that's probably only about a quarter of the conversation. Your first issue is, does anyone know who I am in any way, shape or form? Um, If you're based in the UK and you're an estate agency business, generally speaking, you're up against about 12 other estate agents in your town. So that's sort of the competition on average. Uh, And if you talk and you walk up the average high street in the UK, most people can only name three estate agencies. So you're against 12 and the public can only name three. So your first issue in that situation, does anybody even know who I am? Do they even know how I have an estate agency business? Do they even know I'm a great negotiator and salesperson, et cetera? And the answer is generally no, unless you get across the marketing side of things to kind of demonstrate how good you are and how local you are in that area. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, even for my local market here in the Jacksonville, Florida area, um, you know, talking about that competition here, I think there are, over, I mean, there's well over 12,000 licensed agents in our, you know, kind of metro area. And so really, you know, I think uh, talking about some of those tips for 
getting yourself out there and making sure that you are known will be uh, very applicable to our audience as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Alex Formosi talks about this quite a lot and it kind of, it's about working out what industry you're actually in and what problem you actually have in your business. And for most property professionals, they haven't got a property issue. They can do the job and they can list and sell and complete and all that sort of stuff quite nicely. But what they can't do very well is sort of the marketing, the PR, the socials, the sort of um, building up demand behind the scenes that is then going to support them and actually show them how good they are at being a property professional. Right. Absolutely. So when it comes to those, uh, you know, those challenges, those those problems with the marketing, where, where are some of the areas that uh, agents, you know, what are some of the main areas that agents struggle with, you know, in that marketing? And what are some of the things that they can do to uh, help rectify that? Yeah, sure. So I'm a big believer of sort of done is better than perfect. And I'm also a big believer that you should be, especially in today's marketplace with the internet and YouTube and whatever else it may be, there's sort of no excuse to be you know, not very proficient in any one area of your business. So for example, if you're demographic loves Facebook, you should be on Facebook, you should be on TikTok, you should be um, putting things to their front door, you should have signs up in the local area. There's no excuse to have sort of a flat tire on your car because really, if you're bad at TikTok or whatever it may be, great, go on YouTube, there'll probably be a bunch of 15 year olds telling you how to be amazing at TikTok, you can then watch it, you can be better than most people quite quickly sort of thing. So there's no excuse to have any sort of flat tires in your business at the moment. I'm a big fan of saying, actually, what we want to do when you first launch a business is kind of do everything. And you need to be on every social media platform, every bit of marketing you can think of under the sun, whether it's sort of drop in sessions, whether it's leaflets, whether it's letters, whether it's knocking on people's front doors, um, loads of things like that, you know, basically do it all. And then take a step back in about three, four, five months time and go, right, actually, what's worked well for us? What's give us best bang for our buck and best return on our investment? Has it been the social media stuff? Has it been the day? And then focus on what is working well for your business. So clients say to me all the, all the time, what marketing is going to work best for me? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I literally don't know. So we are going to do pretty much everything for your business to start things off with. And then we're going to take a step back because it depends where you are in the world, where you are in the country, your demographic you're working with. Some audiences will love social media. Some audiences will hate social. We just don't know until we do it. So the best bet is to do everything and then take a step back and go, right, what is working for us? What's going to be our best bang for our buck? And then work it from there. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, um, you know, almost that self accountability and that self, you know, just self reporting and, and figuring out where, uh, you know, what your return on that investment is, is so important. I think sometimes, um, agents get so overwhelmed with everything else they're doing that they, they forget to go back and like really look at what their numbers or even track their numbers as they're going along to get a clear picture of, uh, how those marketing efforts are working. Yeah, and there's two parts to this. And when agents first launch their businesses sort of under my um, sort of watchful eye, let's call it, um, I say to them, look, I'm, I don't care about the inputs. I do not care what comes into your business, whether you get a listing on day one or a sale in month two, whatever it may be. All I care about for the first three, four, five months or so is what you get out. So if you can come forward to me at the end of the week and be like, Chris, I've deployed X, Y, and Z. My social media's done X, Y, and Z, and I've done da, da, da. Fantastic. I'll be the first one to sort of say, well done. In the same way that the personal trainer came to you and said, Michael, go on that treadmill for five hours a day, you're going to lose weight. Like it's just a, it's a mathematical thing. Five hours a day, you're going to lose. I need to worry about anything else. You can eat what you like in your spare time. It's just kind of a done deal sort of thing. So it's the same sort of method there. I'd also think it's about looking at what's going to provide the quickest wins in your business. Because I'm all about, you know, quick results. And if you can get some quick wins, absolutely great. And in a state agency, you're probably going to spend the next 10, 20 years of your career trying to get strangers to know, like, and trust you. So if you're launching your business today, let's start off with the people who we know, like, and trust us already, which is our friends, our families, people we used to work with, connections, all that sort of stuff. And let's look at that first of all. So one of the exercises that anybody who kind of starts working with myself will do is first, literally first day, we'll be sending a video out to everybody they know, um, excluding ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, but apart from that, everybody else saying, this is what I'm doing. Do you know anybody? This is how you can help me. Because those people know, like, and trust you already. So therefore, let's take full advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, you know, so many people I talk to, um, you know, when we I always ask kind of looking back at your real estate career was something that you wish you would have done to jumpstart yourself a little bit more. And they do talk about, I wish I would have told more of my, you know, surrounding people what I was actually doing. I was afraid to do that. And, you know, I, I think that is so important um, for new agents out there to really uh, just 
just let people know what you're doing. I, th I think that's the, it's always, I see that as kind of the beginning of a bit of a death spiral, which sounds very mm -hmm. pessimistic. I will agree. Yeah. Um, and that is where you don't tell anyone what, anyone what you're doing because you're worried it's going to fail. But by not telling anyone what you're doing, it's going to fail anyway. So you're like a self-fulfilling prophecy on that side of things. In fact, you want to go in the complete opposite direction and go, right, from today, I'm launching my own estate agency business or real estate business. I'm going to tell everybody. So anybody who's friends, family, relations, people on the bus, whatever it may be, tell everybody what you're doing. Because if you don't tell them what you're doing, you're going to end up exactly what you're scared of being. And that is your business not working out for you. And the, the true test that I would have in myself always is if I was ever hesitant about putting a podcast out or sending a newsletter out, anything you think to yourself, hmm, this is kind of a bit of a out of my comfort zone sort of thing. Well, what's harder? Pressing send on that email or turning around to your friends and family and going, oh, my business isn't working. I'm going back to work at X, Y, and Z company instead. So yeah. the answer to that question should be quite obvious. So therefore you'll press send on that email pretty quickly. Right. Absolutely. And when it comes to, uh, you know, sending out those newsletters or doing the podcasts and things like that, I feel like in today's day and age, the way, you know, technology works with AI. I mean, it's so easy to create that type of content and, and start building up that, um, you know, expert status in your uh, field. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I'm very uh, passionate about this with the guys I work with. And I say to them, look, do you remember when you went to see your grandparents and they kind of got first got the internet and they were really kind of like, you know, which one's the start button and which one's Internet Explorer and where's the URL bar, whatever else it may be. In five years' time, that'll be you with AI. So my advice to you is get involved in it today in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just adding emojis to your social media posts or whether it's you know typing up your post-meeting notes, whatever it may be. Do something with it in the short term so you've got some involvement with it, because especially the way it's going and the speed it's traveling at, if you're not on board with it pretty quickly, you're going to be having to start on Chapter 10, and it's far more confusing. So you're better off getting on kind of Level 1, Level 2 when it's kind of building up to things rather than kind of join it later on. So my advice for anybody not using AI in their business at the moment, leverage it as much as you possibly can do because it can make you a media machine. You know, whether it's YouTube descriptions or social media posts or blog posts or books or whatever, it can do it all for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, you know, so as you're, you know, building up these, uh, this content and things like that, um, you know, obviously for new agents that are coming in or maybe an agent that has relocated to a new area, they're probably going into a market that has a couple of, you know, the top, the top agents that everybody knows, okay, that's, that's the guy that handles, you know, for our area, you know, that's the, that's the beach Yep. guy or this is the condo lady how do you compete against those you know top agents in your market so it's about if you're going against a top agent so an agent who is the market leader in your area so in the uk we're very obsessed with the term market leader and if you're the number one agent with regard to listing properties selling properties you're the market leader well if you look at that actually are they the market leader on customer service are they a market leader with regard to percentage of asking price they achieved are they, are they a market leader with regard to how quickly they sell their properties or the way they present them for example usually the answer is no usually they're market leader with regard to the number of houses they've got on the market number of houses they've got under offer so when you look at it that way the answer is quite obvious because you're like okay well they've got a hundred properties up for sale and i've got five okay so where's the customer service going to be who does this who does this one of five people matter more to well obviously it matters more to me i'm you're not gonna be number 99 for example and be looked after that well whereas if you're number four you probably are so it's about looking at what the opposition is doing and not trying to fight fire with fire because if you go through there and they go well i'm the market leader and you're like no no, no i'm the market leader you're like well only one of you can be the market leader whereas if you stand back and say actually I don't want to be the market leader. Those guys have got 100 properties to sell and well done them. If you want to be one of 100, absolutely give them a call. They'll be a good agent for you. No problem at all. But if you want a more customized service who deals specifically with this type of person in this type of area and I've got this sort of buyer looking for your property, this is who you should be working with because of X, Y, and Z. And here's the benefit to you because of working with myself. So don't try and compete fire with fire. You're not going to win. You're far better off if you do find a fire in your house, get a hose pipe rather than more fire. You'll have a far better situation at the end of it. Right. And I think, you know, in that same vein, it's it's so important that when you do, uh, you know, for the, you know, the four other folks you're working with or the people you've worked with in the past, um, you know, collecting those, you know, whether you call them testimonials or case studies, whatever it is, um, to kind of have that, that proof of your, uh, you know, the way you worked with them. Absolutely. It's about understanding what's important for clients. 
And what's important to one client might not be important to another client, for example. So let's take some very stereotypical examples here. So I'm sure it's very sort of, um, yeah, stereotypical kind of examples in that situation. So let's say, for example, you were a property developer and you just built a, a huge apartment block of building sort of thing. You know, are you that worried about the customer service from your estate agent professional? Probably, you know, probably not the highest on your list, but is getting as much money as possible and selling them as quick as possible absolutely top of your list? Absolutely. Imagine you were 99 years old moving out of your bungalow into a retirement property. Are you that fussed about getting the absolute most money and the quickest time possible? Eh, probably not so much. But are you concerned about having, you know, your hand held from start to finish because you've not bought or sold a property for the last 50 years? Absolutely. So it's about looking at the clients you're looking to work with in the future and going, what is important to these people and what problems can I solve for them in their situation that's going to make me the obvious choice for them? Because if you go forward to that 99-year-old lady and say, I'll get you as much money as possible and I'll sell you as quick as possible, she's probably going to go, I don't care. So whereas if you turn around to a developer and say, I'm getting you as much money as possible and sell as quick as possible, like, great, fantastic, when can you start? So it's about knowing your audience, about who you're working with and then customizing your proposition to that individual. When it comes to being that, you know, going over that, uh, going out to that market leader or, uh, you know, really showing off how hard you work for somebody. I think, you know, sometimes people might get, uh, you know, they want to charge, you know, a higher commission rate or, you know, a higher rate for their work. Uh, what are some of the things and what are some of the messaging that agents can use to, to be able to get that higher uh, rate for their work? Yeah, so when it comes to talking about your successes, I would be very hesitant. So I can I can talk about a very sort of British slash American um, comparison here. Um, British, very stiff upper lip. We don't if we do well, we we tell nobody. We'll take it to our grave. We did a good job, and I tell my clients quite religiously: be more American, be more of a. I've done a good job. Let's kind of make a song and dance about it. So you guys are fantastic at that sort of angle. So well done you for that. So I think that it's about having that, especially in the UK. It's about having that sort of. Not a message to say I'm amazing, but it's more I've helped people. So they came to me and they were in this situation. They had this problem, this problem and this problem. And I fixed it by doing this, this and this. And ultimately, for agents who are looking to charge higher fees, all business is based around fixing problems. The bigger problem you fix, the more money you can charge for it. So if you can come forward and go, my niche is working with people in XYZ location and in XYZ situation in their life. So families in so-and-so Jacksonville, America, and they're looking to upsize. And I know the problems you're going to come up against is the fact that you've got to have your house nice and tidy for those viewings. I know you've got to take your kids out for the day. I know you're going to struggle to find your next property. I can help you with this, with this, with this, and this, and this, and this is what no other agent is going to do for you because I know my clients and exactly what they're looking for. People will pay for that. What they won't pay for is I take on any property between £100,000 and £10 million and I try and solve all their problems because that just isn't possible. That isn't something that is going to work for yourself. You're far better off by niching down and going to a pure area of saying, this is who I work with, this is my clientele, this is their problems, this is how I fix it, and this is how much I charge for doing that. Yeah, and you know, even just thinking, you know, really highlighting those, uh, those more... Um, quality of life type things that you can provide your clients like the, you know, uh, we know it's going to be difficult for you to find a house, you know, in, in this, or we're going to have to work with you to get the kids out. I think those things, when it, throughout the transaction, I feel like people are, uh, your sellers are going to be so much more appreciative of those types of things rather than the, we're going to blast this into every different marketing sphere that we can to get your, your home sold. Yep. 100%. It's about, again, looking at what's important to the individual who owns the property. So when you, when you talk to most agents in the UK and say, what's the main factor why people choose to work with X agent, most turn around and go, it's the fee. It's the fee they charge and it's how you know they were cheaper than me or they valued it slightly higher, or whatever it may be. It's always about the money. When actually, if you look at the general public and talk to them and say, why did you pick to go with your estate agent? About 10% actually pick it on fee. So agents have a huge overestimation, overestimation about how many people are actually choosing their agent based on fee, whereas the actual reality of it is about 10%. So th there's business out there across the board. You know, there's only one cheapest agent in town. Try not to be it as much as possible because generally speaking, especially in the UK, that 10% who pick their agent based on fee alone are usually the biggest pains in the backside as well to go with it and want sort of the maximum service for minimum sort of um, payment, which isn't really a fantastic marketplace to be in. So as soon as you've got enough data in your business, which probably only takes six months to a year or so to be able to take a step back and go, actually, who's my ideal client? 
where do they live? What sort of property they got? What's their good news? What's their bad news? What's their pain points? You can then work it forward to a better package for the individual to deal with working forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, throughout that time, if you are providing all those services, uh, you know, you again, you have those people singing your praises and those are going to be bringing in those referral clients for you. Yep, 100%. And I think that the best agents, especially in the UK, just give, give value, give, 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 give. So, you know, everything they do is they never ask for the business. They never go on their social media and go, give me a call if you want to sell or message me if you want to get your property on the market. Nothing from that in any way, shape or form. They'll go, you know, if you want to move into, you know, certain part of London, for example, or certain part of Oxford, for example, you know, here's your top 10 guide to places you can take your kids to school. Or if you want to walk your dog in the local area, here's top five places to take them. It's just giving information. You know, what, what is this part of selling? How long does this part of selling take? How, what does this appointment look like? How long does that take? If you then want to put it on the market, how long does that take? So it's about giving value to the local area as much as you possibly can do so that you are seen as the local authority on it. And therefore, as if by magic, when people actually come to sell their property, they go, well, who's that person that's been really nice and helped me for the last couple of years or so? Oh, it's X, Y, and Z, or X, Y, and Z estate agents. Yeah, and, that, and that leads into my next question about, you know, how do, uh, you know, when it comes to converting more leads and it's interesting, you know, uh, you said that very rarely are you wanting to go out there and, and go for the hard sell right away. So how, how are you converting more of those leads as you begin to get more eyeballs on your business? Yeah, absolutely. So it's about looking at the customer journey from start to finish. And I think the one thing that many agents don't do which they should do is kind of paint out their customer journey from start to finish and i'm sure if you sat down with most agents and said talk me through the process of you know listing a property getting it on the market selling it etc most of it's in their head and they go when i sell a property i do a b and c and when i list a property i do one two three etc but actually what a valuable process to go through is go right this is my process if you listed on the market with me today from start to finish over the next three months, six months, whatever it may be, this is the process you go to from start to finish. And most of that is based around customer satisfaction, but also generating more instructions off the back of the property instructions you've got on the market already. So this basically produces a product for your business. You know, you go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, it's exactly the same. It's, you know, it's the same Coke, it's the same burger, et cetera, because they've got the systems and the processes to say, this is how we make a burger. This is how we make a milkshake. And therefore, it's the same everywhere. You should be looking to replicate that within your own business. And you should be looking to have, this is how we start things. This is how we end things. And then over time, that is going to evolve and develop. Because you might go, actually, I'm going to outsource that to AI. Actually, I'm going to get a PA and I'm going to outsource that bit sort of thing. So I haven't got time to do that anymore. Actually, it'd be really good. Instead of me sending that via email, I'm going to drop it around by hand instead. So you can then look to improve that over time. But if you never have that process in place to start off with, it's a bit of a guessing game. And that also pays dividends to when you look to expand your business as well. Because if someone joined your estate agency business today and they listed their first property, you could literally go, here's our process from start to finish. You're, you're, lot, you're starting launching with me today. You're on the right-hand side of that spreadsheet. Give me a call when you get to the left-hand side. Then you've done it. So then, then your first one's done. So you've kind of basically produced a, a guide to being a, a, an estate agent within your business that people can replicate and then follow. That is scalable. But having it all in your head that you kind of, do it sometimes, sometimes you don't do it, isn't fantastic. So you need to get it down on pen and paper, first of all, and then look to improve it from there. With the uh, people that you work with, uh, you know, and in our coaching, how often do you, um, you know, work with them or, uh, uh, you know, recommend that they go back to that list and make sure that it is evolving? Yeah, absolutely. So I always say to my clients that the, the lowest hanging fruit in their business is the available properties they have for sale at the moment. So the, the available properties they have on the market at the moment, because if they uh, improve the marketing around it, they change a price, for example, it goes from a liability to an asset in the business very quickly. So if they change the price on it and suddenly they sell it, great, that's gone from £5,000 they didn't have to £5,000 they do have. So that's a good result. Straight away on top of that, as soon as they've got those properties optimized as much as possible and they're being advertised as well as possible, the next step is always to look at that process and to go, right, you've listed that property on the market last week. If I lived two roads down, what do I know about you selling one of their neighbor's properties? And if they go, nothing, right, okay, well, let's go back to the process sheet. Let's work our way through from start to finish because they should have received three things by now that says you've listed a property in their local area. So, you know, you look at generally speaking about 11 marketing touch points within a local area for someone to kind of know, like, and trust you. So if you're listing a property around in that area, 
they should be getting multiple marketing touch points in front of the homos in the local area to say, hi, I'm Michael. I'm the agent selling in your local area. I've done a great job of listing a property. I've done now got a great job of selling it. I've now done a great job of completions. Everyone's really happy. I've had a review. It's that constant message. And even if you're a, a smaller fish in a big pond, for example, let's say other agents are listing 100 properties a month and you're listing 10, for example, the bigger splash you can make around those 10, the bigger you seem as an agent. So as, as a sort of a, a tangent, but a real world example for this, when I used to work in um, corporate offices, we had one company car. So one lonely company car in the business. Um, no one wanted to drive their own car. So everyone drove the company car all the time to viewings and appointments. Right. Every time we used to go on appointments, people would say to me, I see your company car everywhere. How many company cars have you got? You must have five, six, seven company cars. I'd be like, we've got one because it's driven all the time. So it's, it's the same sort of method with your marketing. You may not be selling every property in that street or in that location, but the amount of sort of bang you get for your buck every time you list and sell a property, everyone's like, you must be selling seven, eight, nine, ten properties in the local area. It's like, no, I've just done a really good job around that one property, maximize my exposure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even for where I, particularly live we live in a uh, a neighborhood that is coming up right around like the the five year mark where the first homes were built in it and um, it is that would be a great opportunity for agents selling in this area you know when a when a home comes up on the market to send out those you know those mail pieces that it's just been listed you know send out you know make sure that your open houses or whatever marketing you're doing for the home is you know big and you have your signs out and then as soon as it's sold send out another piece with the details. And then when you get the testimonial from them, send out, and it really looks like you've sold five or six homes in this place when it's really just that one. Absolutely, you've just done a brilliant job of leveraging your time and your marketing exposure to make yourself look far bigger than it actually is. So things like, you know, if you had a, a local development where there's lots of individual houses on a new build site, for example, start a community Facebook group, post in that community Facebook group. Everyone was going to come in there and complain about the bins not being collected and posts being stolen or whatever else it might be. But if you can start sort of over time, just sort of setting yourself up in that area and saying this, just FYI, guys, this one's coming on the market or just let you know we've sold this one or just letting you guys know, first of all, in case anyone wants any friends and family to move in the local area, you can start to build that community around you. And you don't always need to say, I'm an estate agent or I'm a realtor trying to sell properties. You're just there to help and you just happen to sell properties as well. Yeah, absolutely. For, um, you know, people listening to this and, you know, the markets are always evolving and, and you know, technology is always changing. What are some of the things that uh, you see uh, coming up in the future that we're going to are going to have an impact on the way uh, agents, you know, in the UK and in the United States uh, do business and generate more leads? Yeah, so we are a considerable distance behind you with regard to the self-employed estate agency group. So we have uh, Keller Williams over here. We have EXP over here as well. Um, the self-employed uh, estate agency market share in the UK is sub 10%. It's probably 8% in that sort of ballpark at any one time. But that is growing very quickly. And I would imagine that's probably going to be at 20% within the next three, four years. I mean, it's really ramping up really, really quickly. So with regard to kind of that side of it, we, we are catching up to you, which is what I think is a really good thing. I think self-employed estate agency is the way forward. I think it's brilliant. Um, really all behind it sort of full force. How estate agency is going to change in the future? I think it's more about making yourself that sort of digital mayor and sort of pillar of the community. And it's a case that if you are selling a certain type of property or a certain type of area or a certain demographic, almost making yourself the go-to person for that community. So people can't help but avoid you. So great, you know, you live in a local village where they, um, you know, it's mostly family orientated. Great, sponsor the school events. Great, have a podcast for the local area. Have a guide to welcome people to the local area should they look to sell their properties. Have a, um, like a property guide to say what you should do when you look to sell your property. Have a local handyman guide to say who, you know, if, you, if your boiler breaks down, this is who you should be calling. So it's kind of being that hub of the community, which you can do now, but obviously in the coming weeks, months and years, as AI improves very quickly, you'll be able to do that as a one person band. Whereas now, you know, you can you can produce quite a lot of content as a one person band, but you, you are limited in some way. But I think fast forward a year's time, two years time or so, that'll be so quick and so easy. And so what you want to do in the short term now is sort of monopolize that while you can. Yeah. Because I would imagine, so for example, in the UK, estate agents with podcasts, I can probably count on 10 fingers. It's, it's just not a thing, not a thing in any way, shape or form. And whereas I think in a year's time, 
two years time, the penny will drop and someone will start doing it and they'll go, oh, actually, that's quite easy to jump on Zoom and press record and upload to the internet. That doesn't take a huge amount of time and I can get loads of content off the back of it and clips and whatever else it might be. So that's kind of coming down the route. But with AI on top of that, that's going to turbocharge that over the next couple of years or so, without a doubt. So again, if you're not on AI already, you, you, you have been warned. Right, absolutely. And, you know, uh, talking about the digital mayor and, you know, producing those guides and the, I have friends that, you know, one of them, she is uh, kind of the relocation expert and the relocation queen of uh, market Boise, Idaho, which is a exploding market in the United States over the last five years. But you cannot miss her on YouTube, on you know her blogs. If you type in anything about moving to that market, she is the person that comes up. Yeah, 100%. And that, that's where things like ChatGPT are your best friends because you can create a custom GPT and say, right, for my YouTube videos, I would like you to write the description for my YouTube videos. I am a real estate agent in so-and-so area, putting all the keywords into my description that you think we're going to be regularly searched for in the local area. So, you know, property, Idaho, real estate, sell it, whatever it may be. All those keywords are going to be in there. And if they go into your blogs as well, your videos, your podcast, it's not going to take long before the search platforms go, hang on, as soon as anyone types in anything about search, your name comes up first of all for the first five, six slots on, on, on Google. You've pretty much nailed it at that point. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, you know, for agents, you definitely do not want to get discouraged on maybe it's not getting a whole bunch of clicks, like your videos aren't getting view, a whole bunch of views right out of the gate. It's that consistency and it's that building up of that library so that when you do get that one person looking at it, they have more that they can, you know, really start co to connect with, with you. It, it's it's about the the silent audience that you're looking for so as a as a real experiment i so i did a post a year ago and it got 500 views something like that on linkedin so i was like oh, okay a bit of a bit of a flop but there we go um i did exactly the same post a couple of days ago and it got six and a half thousand impressions within a day or so no difference literally the same post same picture same text copy and paste very lazy on my part and i thought i wonder how well my my so far my profile has gone in that time so what you should look to kind of fall in love with isn't the result off the back of it. Fall in love with the process. Fall in love with pressing post, pressing upload, pressing share. That should be the fun bit of the job. You're like, yeah, great. I've done it. I've focused on my outputs in the business. Because ultimately, whether it gets 100 views or 100,000 views, who knows? It, you might do, you might not. Aren't names in a hat. It might do really well. It might do terribly. So why stress yourself out? Why worry about it? But you know that if you are putting up content every single day or every single week or a blog post every week, you know that over time that will add up. So it's very easy to say, don't worry about the views. Don't worry about the impressions. Just focus on doing what you know is going to work over time. It's Again, it's that, that five hours on the treadmill. If you're doing that every day, the rest will fall off the back of it. And you'll realize that you know something will happen in about six months time or a year's time and someone will invite you out to their property and they'll go, yeah, I want to have you out for a while actually because I, I read your blog, I, I watch your YouTube videos, I listen to your podcast and you're like, okay, this is great. Like I, I, th that podcast that got no likes and only got six listens, great. Well, they were that individual who actually listened into it sort of thing and they took it on board and they thought it was really, really good. So that's ultimately where you want to get to with your clients, where they've decided they want to work with you before they've even walked to the front door because they've listened to all your back catalogue, they know what you like, they know what you sound like, what you look like, etc. They open the front door and that person appears. That's where you want to get to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before I let you go, tell me about your your book and um, you know that. Uh, you know, that's something that, you know, even our listeners in the United States, I mean, all these things, it, real estate space, all the different tips and the marketing and the scalability, it's also applicable no matter where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. So in the UK, the, the self-employed world is growing. And that's kind of my niche that I go into. I work heavily with um, people like Keller Williams, for example, and EXP and their um, agents that they bring on board as well. Uh, the, the figures for those people surviving is not fantastic in the UK. So about 40% drop out in the first year. Um, and there's a pretty small percentage that are still there after five years, which I'm not a fan of in any way, shape or form. You know, UK is one of the richest countries in the world. Our properties are some of the most expensive in the world. So I'm very aware there's enough of sort of the pie to go around. So I don't see that there should be any situation where agents go out of business in the UK having a property business. So I want everyone to be in a business and actually earn good money off the back of it. So that was my pre-thought with the book. 
So the book is called Your First £100,000 Estate Agency, and it's exactly that. It's designed to take you through from day zero, or maybe just before day zero, right the way through to getting £100,000 worth of revenue into your business. And it's I put as much stuff in there as I possibly could do with regard to guides, templates, letter templates, systems, processes. So you can just copy and paste it as much as you possibly can into your business. Um, my income off the back of the book is exactly zero. I give it away completely free of charge. Um, you can literally download it off my website for free. You can buy it from Amazon. It's done exactly at cost price. So it is very much a, a loss leader for myself in the grand scheme of things. But you know, I get messages every other day from people saying, thank you so much, Chris. I use your letter template or I use your process. I've just got a new instruction. I've just sold it. Thank you so much. That's more payment than I could ever ask for in a monetary term. So for me, that's what it's all about. So um, slightly exclusive for yourself. I'm just about to have book number two come out um, very shortly. So I've literally just had a text from uh, my copywriter to say he's just finished reading it. Um, and that's called How to Grow Your Estate Agency. You can see I'm quite common with the themes uh, on the naming <laughs> side of things. And that's coming out in about a month's time. Oh, and that great. is literally from the last book, starting off at kind of the final chapter, and it's now going, right, you've got a business which is bringing in £100,000 per year. How can you get up to like £250,000 per year as a one-person operator? So it's more, the first book is how to be a really good estate agent. The second book is how to have run an estate agency, which is producing you the leads and the, um, the income that you deserve as a functioning agent. Awesome. Well, we will definitely be uh, promoting those out. And then tell me about, so the actual uh, consultancy, uh, how do, do you work with clients outside of the UK and how does that work? Um, I have some overseas clients. Um, we base our model purely on a gain basis. So I'm, I've worked a lot in franchising businesses in the UK and I've always liked franchising because everyone's in the same boat. So for example, if the franchisee does well, the franchisor does well. So everyone's pulling in the same direction. So we try and have that relationship as much as we possibly can do with our clients, wherever they may be. Um, and effectively, in the same way that if you didn't sell a property, you wouldn't get paid. If your business doesn't grow off the back of what we do, we don't get paid either. So the risk is on us and we're all pulling in the same direction. So yeah, work with many clients that are overseas. We look at what they're doing at the moment, look what's working, double down on that, look what isn't working at the moment. And we kind of go, actually, you're better off going down that route instead. Because a lot of the guys I work with are fantastic estate agents. They just have a terrible estate agency behind the scenes, which isn't supporting them enough to give them the business they want. Right. Excellent. And how can people get in touch with you if they are interested in learning more about that? Yeah, sure. So um, hopefully I'm on all the socials um, shamelessly. So if you type in estate agent consultancy into you, into Google, YouTube, TikTok, pretty much anywhere under the sun. Um, our website is estateagentconsultancy.com. Um, there'll be lots of pictures of me on there as I'm a very big fan of the personal brand. Um, so yeah, get in touch with ourselves, send us a DM, whatever it may be. Um, we are literally everywhere, hopefully. And if we're not, let us know because we're not doing our job right. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us today. Thank you for having me on. It's been brilliant. Thank you very much. I want to thank Chris for joining us today and touching on such a wide range of topics. Remember to check out the episode description for links to his book and social media channels. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.